What is going on, everybody? We're back for another Code Peterson tutorial, learning how to make a Game Boy game. Uh, this episode here, we're going to be using Piskel as a graphic editor uh, to create our image sprites. We're going to create the player sprite that we're going to control, and we're going to create an enemy sprite. Uh, this information here on the left-hand side to kind of help us with this a little bit. Uh, and then I have Piskel from PiskelApp.com loaded up in the browser just to show you that you don't have to install it. You can use it on the browser on here, and it works pretty good. And you can still save your files locally, which is cool. All right. So to uh, begin here, we want to go here on the right-hand side to resize. And with this, uh, the characters or the actors that we create need to be 16 pixels by 16 pixels. Uh, so here on the width and the height, I have that. We can see as I move my pen tool here, um, it's 16 by 16 through there. All right, then uh, the next thing I want to do is, and this is all from the web page. All right, so uh, they have these different colors, and it's different than if you were normally making a graphic where you wanted the background to be transparent. Uh, in this, you don't actually have transparent backgrounds. It's color-coded instead of just being transparent. Uh, so over here on the right-hand side, we have these layers. Okay, so layer one, we actually want to use this bottom color here, uh, this pound sign 65FF00. All right, and so if I copy this text here, all right, and you can get it from their web page uh, if you want to look at these more in depth. But to make an original OG style Game Boy game, these are the only colors we're able to use, like a dark, a medium, a light, and then an invisible. So to make things easier in the long run, I like to choose this, this transparent green and then use my paint bucket tool and paste the uh, green in there, obviously. I forgot to do that already. And then color it in there. And you're going to be thinking, holy cow, that is hard on the eyes when we're editing. Well, that's okay because when we go here to layers and we add a new layer, it kind of grays that out a little bit. And then everything we create on here, we can edit this layer without messing with the background layer in it. And it helps our eyes a little bit more. All right, so uh, that was the first thing that I wanted to do. And then I want to create our character. Uh, so to do this, uh, I want to use this dark color here. So I can go ahead and select that text and copy. And then go over here to my color selector. When I click on that, then I can paste it in there. And if I go up here at the top to my um, to my pen tool, I can then start creating this. So this game that I'm making uh, is going to actually be like a, I don't know, like a caveman prehistoric game. I'm going to call the game Prehistorio. So uh, for that, I thought it would be fun to make like a caveman. Uh, for the art on this. I think maybe I might move this head over a little bit. So I'm just going to select it with my dotted rectangle tool. Uh, when you want to move an object, it's kind of weird. You have to hold down the shift button and then click and drag once you have it selected on there. So that is a little bit annoying at times, I guess, uh, to get to use. All right, and I think that looks pretty good. Uh, then I need to fill in this space in here uh, just so uh, we have this cave person's skin. Uh, so I'm going to do that with this light color, I believe. We'll try that. I was going to go medium color, but I think we'll give this a try. Paste that color and then go back to this tool here and you can either use your pen tool or you can use your paint bucket tool to fill in these spots. 
All right, and there is our first uh, part of this image for this character on here. Uh, and I want it to be animated. So in order to do that, uh, we can go up here in the upper left-hand corner and we can either add a frame or we can duplicate the frame. In the bottom right-hand corner, I can click on that. I'll kind of extend this arm over here. Uh, so now what I might do is take this one and duplicate this frame. And this one give a little bit more drastic of uh, some movement. And then also maybe this one could be not only for moving the character, but also like if I wanted to um, have this be the position where the where the character is jumping. This one might even just so the head isn't perfectly still, just to add a little more character uh, when we're having this character move. Maybe we will select the head here and we'll bring that one up. So as I'm doing that and creating these, I can kind of look up here. This this preview up here is kind of nice because then I can see uh, what it looks like when that when that character uh, is is moving through there. So I do think that gives me a decent running animation on there. And then of one of those frames, I have the caveman standing still, and I think that looks good. I think we're set with this animation. Uh, so then what I'm going to do here is create a new folder. And I'll just put this on my desktop and I'll call this one Prehistorio Assets because I'm going to call the game Prehistorio. And then in here, I can go to Save. And the first thing I want to do is save as a Pisco file. And this is a bit annoying. It doesn't ask you where you want to save it. Uh, so it automatically puts that in your Downloads folder. So then I can just click and drag that and put it into my Prehistorio assets over there. And then what I also will do here is rename this because that's kind of a long name. So I'll call this one Caveman. Easy enough to remember. Uh, so there we have that file. And then that's what I would open if I ever wanted to come back and make changes to this. Because eventually we might use the same project and go back and want to switch some things up. So in here, if I wanted to open that, I would just go to import. And then I could go and browse Pisco files and then find where it's saved. And then it opens it back up in here with all the layers and all the frames. Okay, once... Uh, we have that done. We need to go to export. And in here, we want to create a sprite sheet. Uh, so there's a couple different ways you can do this. Uh, the easiest way to import it into GB Studio is if we go with three columns, and then it's automatically going to adjust it to one row. And then you can see here on the file sheet export, it says 48 by 16, three frames, three columns, one row. Uh, so that's where I want to click for this. And then it downloads that right away into my folder again. So then in here, I can just go to my downloads folder. And then I will rename this. And I'll call this one. I might call this one Caveman Sheet because it's a sprite sheet on there and then I can just cut that go over here to my assets folder and then I paste that in there so we have the caveman done uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to create our dinosaur so you can make yours like this or you can make it simpler or more complex most of you out there are probably uh, more talented than I am so dinosaur is going to be like the things that are chasing or surrounding the game. So I can go up here, create sprite, and then it takes me back to the screen. And it should remember those dimensions, that 16 by 16 dimensions on there. 
Okay, now one of the annoying things is when we create a new stripe or a new sprite sheet, it isn't going to remember the colors in here. Uh, so I can copy this on here. And then in here, I can paste it again. And I'm starting with that bright green. And then going to my paint bucket tool, painting that in there, adding my new layer. And then going over here to my brush tool. Copying that. Pasting this in here. Now, I'm going to just have my dinosaur be one color. All right, and then I'll fill that in with that color. I can select that dinosaur and then move it down. So I do want to make sure that the uh, feet are down at the bottom. I didn't mention this before. Uh, I do want these sprites to be facing the right direction. We could flip them around in GB Studio, but it might be easier. We already had our caveman facing the right. I was just in my mind thinking a dinosaur facing the caveman, but let's do it this way. Duplicating a frame, we can race. Maybe something like that where the back is moving like that. And then maybe something with the tail. We'll duplicate that. And on this one, I think maybe if I move the head on here. All right, so that gives us our dinosaur movement there a little bit. So it kind of has some head movement and the tail's moving just a little bit. And the feet are moving. And just like we did with the other one, we can go here to save. Uh, I could call this one dino and then save it as a fiscal file. And I can also go here to export, and I'll do the same thing as I did with the caveman. Three columns with one row. And then click on download. And if we go in here to our downloads folder, on here I can rename this one. Dino sheet and this one, even though we it did let us name it, it still puts all those numbers back there. So I'm going to clean that out so it's just dino.piscal. Select both of those and cut those out, and then go to our desktop and our prehistorio assets and paste this in there. All right, so that's what we have for this particular tutorial. Uh, take a little time and and make a, a sprite. They're only facing one direction. You don't have to make them face in both directions and see what you can make. And then in our next tutorial, we're going to go back to Piscal and we're going to make uh, our tile maps. And then we're going to use that to design a level. So in our next tutorial, we'll be using both Piscal and also Tiled. Appreciate you watching, and we'll get you on the next video.